Or the best thing that Crittenton gave me was they really planted the seeds for me to believe that I could change my life. It empowered me to be confident in advocating for myself and for the family. What brings me here? It's not the coffee. For me, it's the little stories of successes. It only takes one of those stories to just get the energy together to try it again. That's the reason why we come back day after day. I got a call from Montebello High School stating that my daughter was on the way to USC Medical Center. She was in the restroom and she sliced her wrist. When the doctor came up to talk to me, it almost seems like I was a cause of this. To me, I didn't think she had anything wrong mentally until she started hearing the voices. After that, she used to explode at school and there we go, another cut and there she goes back into another hospital. I wanted to help but I didn't know how to even go about getting any kind of help for her. I felt I was gonna lose my family. She would have been pulled from me, maybe I even would have lost the baby and I probably would have divorced. I felt I was gonna lose everything. My sister and I, we were sexually assaulted. I was five. We didn't know the guy. He was a tenant renting a back house. Yeah, and after that, it was kind of like my mom, I guess it probably shattered her world, and it, it did the same for the whole family. Um, going into middle school, our home was kind of unsupervised. I mean, the drugs got worse. I would fight a lot. By the time I was 16, I had been to juvenile hall more than six times. I was really upset. Like, I didn't think that it was the right thing to do to um, a confused 13-year-old. Here at Crittenton, we strive to treat the whole child and not just the label that they come with. Our kids come with multiple problems. Most of them have come from years and years of trauma. You can never change history, but you can change how that trauma affects their future. Wraparound services really offer an intensive home-based service. The team would meet with both of us, and then my daughter had her therapist, and I had the parent partner. We have this motto stating, doing whatever it takes. If she had a crisis at midnight, somebody would pick up the phone. She actually stopped those self-injurious behaviors. To this day, she claims she doesn't hear the voices now. And within six months, the social worker had seen so much progress that they decided to close their case. When I describe what residential treatment is, you have juvenile hall on one hand and you have home on the other hand, and we're the stepping stone between the two. We drove up to the house and I thought the campus was beautiful and my initial thought was I can run away. Running away, to us, it's a symptom of pain. When Lucero ran, we followed her down the street. I just asked her, you know, you're gonna have a choice, but can you give us a chance? The whole time I had felt like no one ever gave me a chance. At that moment in time, she thought, oh, this is not a place where you do time. This is a place where you can actually change. And I felt like they saw me as a person and not a criminal. She was enrolled in school and figured out she liked school. I started to realize I was doing very well. She got an on-campus job, which is often where they start learning, A, how to budget money and how to show up for work. For many of the children, it is going to be a rocky road and not a straight line towards recovery. A month and a half later, she ended up just falling back to her same routine. The difference this time is that I'm more knowledgeable on what's going on, so now I can read the signs better, and I can talk to her and kind of guide her through what she's going through. The Lucero story is particularly impactful because she was returned to the same environment that caused the triggers. She went back to the drugs, which happens a lot, but she still went to school. Even though I was doing drugs, I always made sure that I went to school. Once she had her daughter, at some point she thought, man, I don't want to do this anymore. And I really just hit the ground running, and, and now I'm at USC. I, I'm about to graduate, and then I'll be entering my master's program. Without Crittenton, I would have lost my daughter. And Hector's story is only one story. And now we serve over 2,000 people in multiple programs in multiple counties. If I didn't get back on the van, I uh, probably would have ended up like at a high security correctional facility. Thank you to Crittenton Services. 
thank you for still reaching out to me and, and to this day you still help me. We couldn't do it by ourselves. We couldn't. 